So in this video, we'll discuss how we use simple models for mechanical design. If you haven't done so yet, you should first stop and read the topic reading on simple models. Uh, we'll very briefly review some of the ideas, but to really get the new content, you got to read the topic readings. All right. Also, in this video, we'll have a few exercises for you to do at home. And you'll want to find a place where you can work with pencil and paper. And uh, these work best if you do them with a partner. So uh, now would be a good time to check to see if somebody else is interested in uh, doing exercises with you. All right. So um, simple models are abstractions that allow us to understand things. And, and we secretly model everything. No real thing in its full complexity can fit into our brain. Everything in there is a simplified representation of reality. So when we say we understand something or we know something, what we really mean is we have a model of it. And it can be very helpful to draw these models out explicitly when we are thinking about a design we're working on. Uh, the most useful models are as simple as possible while still demonstrating the phenomena of interest. And they allow for analysis and extrapolation to new designs. We'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by that later. And um, <clears throat> generally, uh, we use lots of different types of models over the course of design process for different purposes as we go along. And they tend to increase in complexity as our design progresses. Um, so uh, it's something, something that I think uh, that isn't totally obvious when you start doing these analyses is that um, although eventually we need our design to, you know, for all the details to be good enough, most of the big choices are made uh, based on very simplified models of the system early on. So uh, most of the difference in performance is going to come from those you know, choices you, based on the simple models. Okay, so let me provide an example of what I mean, and we'll illustrate with a cow. What is the simplest useful model of a cow? So I'm, I'm being a little bit tongue in cheek, of course, but um, people actually do have models of cows. You have models of cows. And what makes a good model of a cow will depend on how you want to use it. So there's the old uh, joke, assume a spherical cow. And, you know, haha, physicists. But actually, it can be very useful in our understanding of, say, heat transfer from the body to the world or estimating metabolic uh, rate, resting metabolic rate, which is where this, uh, this uh, formula is from. But actually, there's an even simpler approximation for us mechanical engineers, which is which is this, the point mass model of a cow. And this comes in very handy if you're gonna uh, make a first approximation of cow ballistics, like what trajectory it would follow if flung from a catapult. Now, let's say you wanted to get into a more detailed estimate, a, a, a more accurate estimate uh, that lasts five, 10% really matters, then you're gonna have to account for the aerodynamics. And, and here's a, uh, CFD model of a cow that someone apparently has put together. Or uh, perhaps you're interested in studying the cow as a chemical plant, as were the uh, environmental scientists who developed this block diagram of the cow to understand how different inputs affect different uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So, you know, a little bit of silliness here, but probably secretly you had some version of all these models in the back of your head. Uh, before we started talking about it. And the point of all this is that um, models are really important for understanding the world around us, especially in the process of design, because they give us ways of understanding how changing one thing may affect some outcome that we care about. And um, the type and complexity of the model you'll use depends on the purpose. Okay, now, now it's time for an exercise. And this works best with a friend. So now would be a good time to start chatting with or even call a friend uh, who's in the class as well. Got him on there? Okay. So in this exercise, we're going to develop simple models of a claw hammer. 
And a claw hammer is a, a tool that's used both to hammer nails into material and to pull them out by um, wedging them into this tapered slot and then levering against the board so that the hammer is kind of pushing down. And uh, the first exercise is to draw the simplest useful model of this claw hammer. And we'll focus on the one pictured here on the right. And we want to analyze it for purposes of load analysis. Uh, uh, we, we want a model that's appropriate for load analysis or free body diagram analysis. So in a moment, I'm going to tell you to pause the video. And then uh, you'll uh, pause it. You'll sketch out your ideas and then talk them over with your exercise partner. And this should take about five minutes all in. And then we're done, start the video again. And I will discuss some possible solutions. All right, pause the video. Okay, you back, all set. So, um, if we're doing load analysis, we're, we're going to do a, a free body diagram. And the only geometric parameters that will show up in our free body diagram are the lengths of lever arms. And they, they come in because of moment balance, where the forces get multiplied by the lever arms. So um, if we're thinking about this claw hammer being used to pull a nail out of the board, we're going to have a moment from the hand. We're going to have a moment from the nail. And so we just need these two parameters, the length of the handle and the length of the claw. So our simplest model here could be two lines, one representing the handle, one the claw, with uh, two parameters, those lengths. <clears throat> so if your model had more parameters than this, think about whether they are really needed for uh, uh, loan analysis. Maybe they are, maybe you were going uh, in a different direction. Discuss it over with your partner and um, pause the video for a moment to do that. Okay, so our, our next exercise here is to draw the simplest model uh, of this hammer for stress analysis. And we're gonna do this the same way. So um, I'll say pause, you sketch, discuss with your partner and then come back. And again, this should take about five minutes, all right? Pause the video. Okay, all set? Well, here's a, a possible solution. An example of a, a simple model that's useful for, for stress analysis. Um, if we're gonna calculate stress, we need to have force distributed over an area. And so we can't have a, a simple line anymore. We need a finite cross section. And so we've, we've got a, a cross section down here. And stress is what happens inside the part, right? So we'll need to have cut somewhere. And in this case, we've uh, cut the handle at the, just above the head of the hammer. And we've approximated the handle simply. It's very complicated geometry, but we've approximated as uh, a rectangular prismatic member. And um, that gives us three parameters, the length of the hammer, the, the width, and the height. And that length will, come in to give us the moment uh, about that end of the handle. And the width and height will be used to, to calculate the area moment of inertia of uh, this cross section down here. And if we bring those two things together, we can get an estimate of the stress due to bending. Now, maybe you uh, assumed a different kind of cross section, like a circular cross section, that's great. Or maybe you were interested in stress in a different location, like at the root of the claw also works. Um, if your approach differed, just take a moment and discuss the pluses and minuses with your partner. All right, great. So uh, that's the end of this quick video on simple models. Uh, in our next video, we will discuss free body diagrams.